Hey everyone, Mr. MC here. This is a guide for round 23 of the Nations Cup. Let's get this started. Bring yourself to the left and brake just before you reach the 100 meter mark. Brake hard for a moment, ease off of the brakes, and go over the yellow curve that you see right in front of the car. Get the car to stabilize before you start to fully accelerate and do not get the right wheels to go over or go past the yellow curb, otherwise you will get an off track penalty. Bring yourself to the left and brake before you reach the 100 meter mark. Ease off of the brakes to let the car rotate and quickly get on the throttle. You want to brake a little bit before you reach the 100 meter mark for this turn since you are going downhill. Ease off of the brakes, just let the car rotate and smoothly start to accelerate. Now go ahead and bring yourself to the right as you want to brake before you reach the 50 meter mark. Ease off of the brakes, get on the curb on the left to help the car rotate. And when the green area on the right ends, you want to brake hard for just a moment. Let the car rotate once again, get on the curb and gently start to accelerate. Your next braking point is before you reach the 50 meter mark. You can use these track marshals on the left as your braking point as well. So you brake hard for a moment, ease off the brakes, get on the curbs, and then brake before the red and white area on the left ends. Do not cut too deep into the turn, otherwise you will get an off track penalty. But that is all for the lap guide. Let's go ahead and talk about the strategies. For the qualifying session, you'll have 10 minutes to try to get a good qualifying time. So with this qualifying session, you want to try to make sure that you can get the slipstream out of someone as you have a couple of high speed sections where the slipstream will be useful and will help shave off a couple of tenths off of your lap time. So once that outlap starts, just start looking for that someone where you can get the slipstream out from. And other than that, just go ahead and start doing your laps. Make sure that you give yourself and the car head view space so you don't get too close to them as you do your laps. And if you do a couple of laps or you mess up somewhere or you get a penalty, just back out and then jump back in and then start all over. Do one to two qualifying laps before you jump out and then jump back in. And then you can rest and repeat that until the qualifying session is over. For the race strategy, you're going to want to look for a car that can one, hold a decent pace here at Rebel Ring. Two, doesn't have to feel safe as the fuel situation will be a little tight depending on the car that you're in. And three, be in a car where the tires will not wear out super fast. So with that said, there are two cars that I have come across that hold up to that standard. And those two cars are the Aston Martin Vantage V12 and the Dodge Viper. So with the Aston Martin, this car flies out of corners. So if you can get a really good exit out of some of the even slower speed corners, then it's going to be hard for others to really try to catch up to you. The other good thing about the Aston Martin is that this car can treat its tires really well. The only thing is that you do have to be a little careful when you're exiting out of some of the slower speed turns as this car can generate quite a bit of wheel spin. And with that quite a bit of wheel spin, that will make the tire wear rate to go a little faster. So if you can keep that down to a minimum, then your racing medium tires will last a little bit longer. So as you see here, I was able to make the racing medium tires last up to 12 laps. And at that point, it's time to switch on over to the racing hard tires. And as you're probably picking up now, this is going to be a simple one-stop race. With the fuel, you shouldn't have to fuel save at all. Just don't over rev the car as you will lose a little bit of power as you get closer to the rev limiter. So your goal with the Aston Martin is one, don't fuel save. You don't have to worry about fuel saving at all. And two, just try to make your racing medium tires last as long as possible. If you can get it to last up to 12 laps, then you should be in a pretty good spot. 
don't forget that racing hard tires are required for this race so make sure you equip them at some point that way you do not get the one minute penalty after the race ends so with the dodge viper now that we're talking about the new car so this car is a little bit slower than the aston martin v12 it's a couple tenths of a second per lap slower than the v12 but there are still a couple of redeeming things about this car that can make it a good contender. One is that this car can go through turn one, which is the turn we just went through. It can go through that turn a little bit better than the Aston Martin. Seems that this car can tolerate the curves just a little bit better. You still want to be careful, but this car makes it a little bit easier for you. And the second, and which I think is one of the more important things about this car, is that this car is pretty easy to drive so you can push this car especially on the racing hard tires and this car will be pretty friendly with you it's not going to try to murder you like some lamborghini huracan car that we'll be talking about in a bit but yeah so this car especially on the racing hard tires it's pretty forgiving to drive and yeah so if you're looking for a car that isn't the aston martin v12 you know that car is a little bit too much to handle then definitely take a look at the dodge viper you may sacrifice a little bit of your pace with this car but it's going to be a much smoother ride especially on the racing hard tires as this car once again it's a pretty friendly car it's pretty forgiving to drive and before i forget i do want to mention that the tire wear on this car is slightly worse than the aston martin uh, with this car, I was able to do 11 laps on the racing medium tires, but after that, you know, this car was still pretty good to drive, especially on the racing hard tires, and the fuel, it is not an issue with this car as well. So the last car we'll quickly talk about is the Lamborghini Huracan, and while this car would be the go-to choice for a Rebel Ring, unfortunately, that's not going to be the case, and part of that reason has to do with its 7 times tire wear. So if you're looking at the tire wear on the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you can see that the rear left tire is showing lots of signs of wear. So it's going to become an issue pretty early on. So because of that, you're going to be forced to either pit really early at lap nine and then do I mean 10 laps on the racing hard tires, or you can try to do a two stop. Unfortunately, the Two stop is going to be slower than the one stop so you're going to be forced to do a really long racing hard tire stint on the Lamborghini Huracan but either way because this car is pretty unstable and with the tire wear encouraging the instability to be a much bigger issue I wouldn't even suggest using the Lamborghini Huracan. So that's quite a few things that we've talked about. Let's go ahead and quickly summarize all these things. So this is going to be a one-stop race. Just try to use the racing medium tires as long as you can. 12 laps on the Aston Martin, 11 laps on the Dodge Viper. Those two cars I've mentioned are going to be some of the top contenders for this race, especially the Aston Martin. That was going to be the best one, at least so far as of the recording of this video. So the Aston Martin flies out of corners, but it does generate a little bit of wheel spin, which will make the rear tires wear a little bit faster. So just try to keep the wheel spin down to a minimum so the tires can last a little bit longer. With the Dodge Viper, it's a little bit slower than the Aston Martin, but it is a much smoother car to drive. It's a bit more tolerant of the curbs on the first turn. The tires wear out a little bit faster than the Aston Martin, so you might be able to do up to 11 laps on the racing medium tires before you have to switch on over to the racing hard tire. And with both the Aston Martin and the Dodge, you do not have to feel safe. You can rev a little bit the heck out of the cars before you have to go up another gear. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this guide. And also don't forget that if you are starting in the back of the pack, start on the racing hard tires, so then you can save the faster tire compound for the end and then play a little bit of catch up. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this guide. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. So this is MrMCA wishing you a good race and I'll see you in the next video.